Before getting into Homo floresiensis, it's interesting to mention Homo luzonensis, recently discovered in the Philippines on the island of Luzon. This species description is only based on seven teeth and six small bones, but the fossils appear to be in line with a pygmy hominin species dated to before 50,000 years ago, and raises questions over whether a previously unknown, small, smart, bipedal lape species could have been fairly widespread throughout these regions during the Paleolithic. Back to Floresiensis. They were first discovered in 2003 by a joint team of Australian and Indonesian researchers looking for older evidence of Homo sapiens on Flores Island before the currently accepted 11,000 years ago. They began excavating deeper layers of sediment in this large limestone cave where Homo sapiens had been found in shallow layers previously. Unexpectedly, this led to them finding a reasonably complete skeleton of the later named Homo floresiensis. Nicknamed LB1, or Lang Bua 1, the skeleton was found in a deep, water-filled cavern, and to this day is the most complete floresiensis specimen known to science. The LB1 bones aren't actually fossilised, and were said to have a sponge-like texture when unearthed so it were left to dry in the open air before being fully excavated. Other small bones and fragments of Floresiensis individuals were recovered during this excavation, estimated to represent between four and five individuals at this point in discovery. Other evidence found in this cave during deeper excavations include stone tools, similar to African Old One tool designs, made throughout the early Pleistocene. A large amount of bones from various giant rat species. Bones of a smaller elephant-like animal, the Flores pygmy stegodon. Komodo dragon bones. And those from various bird species, including an extinct giant carnivorous stork called Leptoptilos robustus. All of these species lived on the island at the same time as Floresiensis. It suggested Floresiensis hunted rats and the pygmy stegodon that were prey to the stork and Komodo dragons. Before going through the literal feuds between anthropologists over these fossils and issues in describing Floresiensis, this is a brief overview of what can be said about their anatomy. Only one complete skull of Homo floresiensis is still known to science and is from the LB1 skeleton. LB1 is thought to be a 30 year old female who was 106 centimetres tall. The bones representing other individuals were measured and it's thought this species was on average 110 centimetres tall. From recent research, their skull cavity indicates they had a brain size of 417 cc. You can see it's not in line with prominent homo species in other regions during this time. It's comparable to earlier or more archaic featured homos, but the brain size is still smaller than all of these species and is basically the same size as a chimps. Their teeth are similar in size to modern humans despite Floresiensis' small stature. They've been said to share similarities with Australopithecines, modern humans, Homo habilis, and Homo erectus. LB1 has very short legs, and fair to the hobbit's nickname, disproportionately large feet. Looking at them next to a human leg, the proportions really do look like Tolkien's inspiration for the hobbit. But when shown next to a modern chimp's leg, their proportions make a lot more sense in the wider hominid family. Their feet appear to lack a transverse large, the horizontal arch on top of the foot, which is associated with bipedal stability. They have curved toe bones, which aren't in line with modern human feet. 
and suggests they weren't as far along the trade-off from grabbing to exclusively bipedal feet as other known homo species. LB1 also has longer arms to body size than humans, and researchers have published findings they had hunched or high-set shoulders, and there are many papers on how close their wrist structure is to chimps. Generally, looking at them in comparison to various hominid species, they are unique. If you enjoy this type of evidence-focused content, subscribing would be really appreciated. The species is a difficult one to describe factually in a definitive way, which is partly down to an anthropological feud between the researchers. After the original discovery, it was rumoured by Christian people in Langboa. They were sinners who died in the biblical flood. CT scans were taken of the skull, thought to be too delicate to take moulds from. And a feud began shortly after, when the Australian team published their findings, describing Flosiensis as a new hominin species, making headlines around the world. Indonesia's most prominent anthropologist, Jakob, saw this as stealing the limelight on the discovery from Indonesia and set out to disprove their new species theory and assert these were forms of modern humans. The fossils are owned by Indonesia and held at Jakarta's National Research Centre for Archaeology, who Jakob persuaded to allow him to take nearly all of the specimens back to his own lab, without the Australian leader of the discovery's permission. Without bringing them back or publishing his findings for months, other scientists speculated that he was hoarding the fossils to keep other theories from being published. The bones were given back to Jakarta's repository three months later, but key parts of the anatomy were extensively damaged. The Australian team said the pelvis was shattered, meaning detail of bipedal locomotion was lost and a second unpublished jawbone had been broken and glued back together in a misaligned position. They speculated this happened during a mould being taken, as score marks were allegedly present where the mould would have been cut away. Jakob said pictures show the bones in perfect condition the day they left his lab. The hip damage must have happened in transit to Jakarta once they'd left his care. His team did take moulds, but the procedure couldn't have possibly damaged the bones, and that they reconstructed some remains to study, which hadn't been previously put back together before. The Indonesian Institute of Science then prohibited further excavations in the cave to prevent Australian and Indonesian anthropologist relations from deteriorating more. Though rumours it was to protect Jakob's theories, from being disproved also started. Excavations resumed in 2007, not long after Jakob's death. To date, further excavations on Flores have still found no Homo sapien remains over 11,000 years old. But what has been found includes fireplaces in Langbua Cave from between 41 to 24,000 years old. Over 500 stone tools, currently dated from 60,000 to over 1 million years old. Over 100 Flosiensis bones, estimated to belong to between 12 and 15 individuals, depending on which expert you listen to, as some of the individuals are estimated by a single bone. And an even smaller, 700,000 year old hominin jawbone has been discovered. That's thought to be an ancestor species to Floresiensis. Unfortunately, the fossils have been difficult for the majority of scientists to get access to. It's been said by a prominent anthropologist, if you don't agree with certain theories, you can't see the fossils which has led to a lot of speculative theories over the years, based on either Jakob's or the Australian team's published information. Which is problematic, 
especially when compared to Lee Burgess' 2013 Niladi discovery, whose fossils have been made extremely available. Even how bones have been reconstructed, although presumably fairly accurate, can leave you wondering whether a bias from the researchers could have affected this because of the lack of peer review. Which is why, along with fossil date revisions, this deep dive has been broken into a series to fully explore the theories and information presented on all sides nearly 20 years on and let you make your own mind up. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to subscribe.